but I've had a chance to drive a couple of Teslas. Tesla has been around over 12 years, but yet the general public is not adapting with the difference between being behind the wheel, and the simulator behind the behind the like right now. I'm behind the wheel. I'm gonna try to switch screens. Okay, hold on. Okay, take a look at this. This is real life right here. Cars are stopping, tailgating, not paying attention, right? You'll see cars cut in this driveway. On a simulator, you can control what happens. You can control some of the variables. I want to see a balance of both. We do have flying cars. There was a guy who, who made one, but it's not adaptable to the general public. It, the next 50 to, if it's really popular, that, te that technology will come down to the general public. Look, the average price I think most people can pay is 30000 to 50000 for a car, right? What is that going to get you? That's going to get you a nice pickup truck, a nice mid-sized car, a Mustang, a Charger, a Challenger, right? A mom or dad car, right? But you got to have a job. And some of these cars aren't selling right now. So we're talking about the simulator versus real life. This is, this is behind the wheel. And I'm going to look here to this angle. This is behind the wheel. You're going to have people who are going to run the light. In a simulator, you can put in every 30 seconds, a car's going to run a light. I want to see what you're going to do. Here, it's totally unpredictable. You got a pedestrian walking across. What if a car doesn't see the pedestrian? What if the pedestrian slips and falls? We have cars who are used to coming by that double yellow line, but they're not used to the construction because a lot of people drive the same route. You need to learn to take more than one route home because your brain, look at these cars making this uh, left turn right now. If you're in the outside lane, you need to turn to the lane to the curb. If you're in the inside lane, you need to go to the lane by the double yellow. I'm always precious. Look at these cars. They're making left turns. If you're in the inside lane, you stay in the inside lane. If you're in the outside lane making your left turn, you stay in the outside lane. There are variables. What if it starts raining? What if your car has to flat tire? What if your brakes fail? It's hard to put in those simulations, but yet I do want to create one and I do want to build one and start a channel, right? Um, and this will be sim sim driving or sim racing with the miles. What, you got motorcycles now. What if the motorcycle person slips and falls? What do you do? You should be four cars away from them. What if you have an elderly driver who has a medical emergency? They have a heart attack. They have a stroke. So this is real life. That load that person is carrying in that black truck, what if the back door opens up and that stuff runs out? Those people on that scooter, what if they hit a rock? So I think the best thing, you see these people making left tur right turns, what if they cut in and no blinker? There's a lot of what ifs, right? There's a lot of what ifs. But this is real life driving. And a lot of you see what your mom and dad is doing, but you don't see the dangers. Everywhere we go, there's danger. In your neighborhood, cars, kids. Thank you, wildlife. What if a deer runs out? And if you swerve, look at these cars. See the white Camaro? See the gray car? That's the double left turn. What if the person cuts in the wrong lane? What if they lose control and veer into this gas pump and we all blow up? You feel me? So there's so many different variables that you have to prepare for. But you learn this through driving. You don't learn this through a book. So I like to see an update of more real life situations. I think there needs to be a national conversation with driving instructors, with parents. Um, there's a car that made an illegal U-turn to benefit all new drivers because a lot of the drivers here curriculum is old and it needs to be updated to benefit the next generation drivers who will be driving. What if you're driving your electrical vehicle and there's a fire? Okay, where is the automatic cutoff? I have a race car. I have a Gen 1 Camaro. We have an emergency cutoff switch if the car crashes into a wall or flips over. If the car flips over, the fuel cell will not leak out. There's a chance of a fire. In an electric car, you need to be taught what to do. You have to learn how to drive before you can learn to drive with no hands. You think about that. And driving with no hands is still dangerous. Would I drive in downtown Houston, Texas like that? No. Downtown Detroit like that? No. Downtown Los Angeles, California? No. Because those areas are too populated. 
and the affordability, and I'm just on Tesla right now. Elon, I'm not hating on you. That Tesla has been out 12 years, but they're automotive manufacturers who don't want to work on it. Are you kidding? Because they're not sure, you know, and that battery is still underneath the car in between the frame. And if you hit a pothole just right or a ditch, you could pierce that steel or aluminum membrane and then you're in trouble. I was watching Rich Rides and the insurance industry sold it out of car and it had light front end damage. The battery can be faulty. Yes, it can. And you got $12,000, $15,000. Most people are on a budget to get an electric vehicle. I watched Tesla, wham, bam, Tesla cam, love the show. And I think a lot of people take for granted the self-driving part, but you got to be a defensive driver. And this new technology is coming. And hopefully when, you know, I decide to do lessons and open up this business, should I get a hybrid? Should I get an electric car? Because I'm driving anywhere from 175 to 300 miles a day. That's a lot of mileage. And probably about $50 a day in the summer with gas. It's a lot of money. So if I can charge up the car or get a hybrid, that makes sense. So there are a lot of opportunities out there. If you're properly, I'm a tree hugger. I love the environment. I love performance too now. Don't get me wrong, right? And I'm still holding on to my Gen 1 Camaro. But it's got to be parked right now. The trailer's outside the garage. You got to open the garage door, put the car on the trailer. But you still have to know how to drive. I want to show you something. You see this older car right now. Talk about safety. You see all these cars. Some people use blinkers. Some people do not. There's a pedestrian walking. When you're driving, you need to be looking left, middle, and right. Right? You, it does take an investment. You got to invest in yourself. If I want to be better, I got to train. Who are the experts? Who, who's the expert? Who would I need to see? They're going to sit me down. I'm going to write down everything they say. I'm going to learn everything. That Honda is probably the best car, safest car out there. Okay? What if your windows are tinted? 